Hello, and now we're going to work on another micro lecture. This one's going to be on free body diagrams. So in other words, how do we draw things with forces on them in a way that doesn't take up a bunch of time? As always, three or four, three or more bullet points worth of notes. A one to two sentence summary and follow-up questions are the products you need to do. Okay, so sometimes drawings can be too complicated. For example, if I'm not very good at art, I don't want to take the time to draw this table and the book and all the pages on it. And this is something fairly simple. If it were like a person running, that would be more complicated. If it were a gazelle running, that would be even further complicated. Um, and really, it's unnecessary time that you would spend drawing it. You can just represent it with something a little bit simpler. So that brings us to free body diagrams, which is... In physics, we often simplify a drawing of something to just a box or a dot. So we can represent the book, which is really what's important here, simply just as a box or a dot. Well, in this case, we've got a box. So in free body diagrams, again, anything can be represented as a box or a dot. In this way, it becomes super simple to represent the forces on something and to draw it or kind of um, deal with a problem without having to spend tons of time drawing. And so once we have this box or dot kind of drawn, we then draw the forces going away from it is usually the convention and rather than going towards it. Um, but we draw the forces going away from it and we draw all of the forces that are on it. So in this case, with the book, there was the force due to gravity and then there was the force from the table. We can draw both of those right here. All right, so general rules for free body diagrams. First, represent the object, whatever it is that you're talking about. It can be an airplane, a gazelle, a zebra, a desk, a person, a um, entire planet. Just represent it as either a box or a dot. You can take your pick, you can switch it up every now and then, mix it up a little bit, um, but just represent it as something simple like that. Then you need to draw the arrows to represent all the forces. Again, arrows usually go outwards, away from the box. And we need to keep in mind that these arrows represent the forces, and forces are vectors. So bigger arrows mean bigger forces. It doesn't have to be exactly to scale, but it needs to be fairly close. So if a force is twice as big, the arrow should be twice as long. Fourth, only forces get connected to the box or dot, meaning if you know an acceleration, you don't draw the arrow for the acceleration connected to the box. You can put it, let's say, up to the top right of it or top left of it or something along those lines, but you do not connect it to the box unless it's a force. Last but not least, um, you should label the forces with uh, whatever they are. So in other words, force due to gravity or friction or a pull or whatever it is you can label it as, and the values as well, if you know the values. If you don't know the value, then you don't label the value, but it's kind of important to put those values on there. So let's get some practice. Let's go back to this example of a person sitting on a desk. So we already know that there is the normal force pushing up on this person, and there is weight pulling down. Those two forces are equal, um, just in opposite directions. So we've got two arrows here that are equal in size, but in opposite directions. And so rather than having to necessarily draw these two arrows on top of a person like this, a free body diagram would actually just be the two arrows and a dot. So we've got the normal force, we've got the weights, and we've got our person right here, just represented by a dot. So again, we can kind of simplify the image to this. And this way we can focus on what's important, namely the forces that are on the person uh, and how those are kind of interacting and things along those lines, rather than focusing on what it is we're talking about per se. Um, because ultimately, what the object is doesn't really matter so much as what's happening to it. Let's go back to this example. So draw a free body diagram for a person standing on the ground. Go ahead and pause the video and give it a shot. Again, go ahead and pause the video, give it a shot on your own. Just put it in the corner of your paper or something like that. Trace it on the desk. All right, welcome back. So let's give this a shot. So that's all it is. Normal force going upwards. That's the force from the ground, remember, and then weight going downwards. And rather than drawing a person or a stick figure or something like that on your paper, just draw a dot with two arrows going away from it, because that's all we care about are the arrows. We'll learn a little more why that is later on. 
All right, another example. We've got a person pushing on a wagon. Go ahead and draw uh, the free body diagram for this. Again, pause the video, give it a shot on your own. All right, so we're going to represent the wagon with a box this time, mixing it up a little bit. We already know that weight is pulling down on it, and so we need another force because it's not going anywhere up and down. Um, it's just moving sideways in this case. So we need another force, the normal force, the normal force that's pushing up on the wagon. This is the force from the ground, and they cancel each other out, so they're the same size. But we are still missing something because the wagon's not sitting still. Uh, the little girl is actually pushing it to the left. So let's represent that with a F here and a a uh, subscript of push so we know what type of force it is or where it's coming from, um, mainly because usually we get multiple forces on things. And so this is it. This is the free body diagram for the wagon. We've got a normal force going up, weight going down, and the push going to the left. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.